But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken from her. Luke 10, 42. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just open us up to receive what we will. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. And how many people know that what we, we will receive what we will is a choice that we make? That God is not in control. He is not in control of what I say or do. If, if I choose to live with a poverty mindset, that's my choice. If I chose to if I choose to get out of the pit that I'm in, that's my choice. God's will for me is that I would be prosperous. I would walk in prosperity. And I'm not talking about physical prosperity monetarily. I'm talking about emotional prosperity. Because when you prosper emotionally, that begins to work its way outward. And it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money in the bank. It just matters that you're blessing others. And I'm prospering internally more than ever. But it's a choice I make. And I can't make that choice for other people. I can't force you to believe the same way I believe or to come into agreement with God's word. The thing about Mary, when she made a choice, she chose the good portion and that good portion wouldn't be taken from her. Jesus is our good portion. But a lot of people think that by being religious in their thinking, and, and, and in their own wrestling, in their own power, they don't need God to help them overcome these things. So they make a choice to live in that poverty mindset. Uh, having a poverty or a prosperous mindset has got kind of a bad connotation to it. People instantly begin to think about bank accounts and your social economic status. You can be rich and live in the pit of poverty. <laughs> you can be poor and, and live in a place of prosperity. This is, this is about what's going on within us, and it's the choices that we make as a people about where we're going to stand, where we're going to be. What choice do you make for yourself? God is sovereign. He is, he is sovereign. But there's one area where He isn't sovereign, and that's in my life, where I make choices. God will not make decisions for me. He will stand by the decisions that I make because of the covenant he has with me. But God is not sovereign in those areas of the choices I make. And, and I know this might be offensive to some people, but we have been given a free will. It's my choice if I want to get mad. It's my choice if I want to laugh. It's my choice if I forgive. Uh, the Word of God says... Uh, let no man say when he's tempted, he is tempted of God, because God does not tempt, and neither can he be tempted. Um, that means makes a choice. God will not make those choices for you. If you're looking for God to make a choice for you, he won't. He'll, he'll present to you a way to go, and you have to choose if you're going to go that route. When I was 18 years old, and I snatched that old lady's purse, that was a choice I made, and I actually did do that, and I almost went to prison for it. I, I learned my lesson real quick. <laughs> but it was the choice I made. When I shot up with, with methamphetamines and cocaine, that was the choice I made. To... to let somebody tie a rubber band around my arm and pop something in my vein. That was a choice I made. When I called my mom up and said, can you have Gene pray for me? Because God told me that if I could find one person to pray for me, that he wouldn't leave me or forsake me. He wouldn't have left me or forsake me, but he had to give me a picture 
than I or than I uh, that I can hold on to because I made that choice. I made that choice to walk away from pornography. I made the choice to sit and talk to, to you guys, and hopefully more than one or two will hear this. But it's the choices that we make. God is not sovereign in those areas. We are. And, and, and if we don't see it that way, we won't take, we won't accept responsibility for the things that we do. We'll always constantly be blaming it on God or somebody else. And, and that's really part of the original sin. It wasn't me, it was the woman you gave me. If you wouldn't have gave her to me, I wouldn't have been in this place. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just throwing this out this morning that we need to begin to think about what choices are we making because the place that we live in, I live in the United States, and everything is so, is so fast, moving so fast that you don't really have time to make good, informed decisions. We don't got time to sit around and and, and contemplate our actions a lot of the time. Yet, with that being said, we need to begin to start taking the time to think, to seek God for His wisdom on these things and come into agreement and make a choice to come into agreement. Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet rather than to be busy with her sister Martha. And Jesus said the good portion will not be taken from her. We need to begin to grab on that good portion, begin to apply it to our lives so it won't be taken from us. So, I just want you to think about this today. What decisions are you making? Are you have you decided that you want to wrestle with everything in your life, but you don't want to give, really give it to the Lord because if you really give it to the Lord, then you have to be responsible for what you've done. It's easier sometimes to be comfortable in your misery than it is to be set free because you, you come to a place of responsibility. I heard this, the first time I heard this saying was I was about 19 years old. I grew up, when I grew up, I, I didn't grow up with a lot of good parenting. My, my parents didn't, didn't instill a lot of good things in me, okay? <laughs> but uh, the first time I heard this, you know, I wondered about it, you know, is it really true? Um, with freedom comes responsibility. You're responsible for your own freedom. And it's and and it is true. I'm seeing the truth in this. This statement it comes directly from the heart of God. And when we begin to give up these things and we begin to get free, we become responsible for our freedom. We can't blame it on God or this or that or the other thing anymore. And we begin to see that. And that makes us a people of character. Glory. And I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. You're awesome. Glory. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters. And I'd ask, Holy Spirit, that you would fill them with your hope, your glory, with your peace, with your power. That we would walk in authority. That we would prosper from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, uh, I just want you to get alone with the Lord, begin to seek Him, begin to seek Him. I had the best time this morning with the Lord out on the trail. It was just oh, so awesome. And begin to praise Him and begin to thank Him. Begin to thank Him and let it turn into praise if you don't feel that praise. Step out in faith and become worship. They worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.